Good morning. Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Schaefer. I am the project manager with INME. Uh, I am working with the smart manufacturing TIG and several smart manufacturing projects, and I am the moderator for today uh, at our first tech topic series in smart manufacturing. Um, this uh, this session we have uh, Ben Ong from the World Economic Forum that's going to be speaking with us. I want to let everybody know that uh, you're on mute and that if you do have questions during the presentation, I would ask you to please type them into the chat window and I will um, we will hold those um, until the end and uh, make sure that we address those. And if there is enough uh, time and the line is not too noisy, I will try to unmute folks so that folks can ask uh, questions as well. But um, if there are uh, too many questions or the lines are too noisy, then I will just have to ask the questions through the chat window. Um, just be prepared for that. Um, just want to let you know that this this tech topic series, this is the first in the series um, and the we, we will be inviting various speakers to highlight topics of interest in in smart manufacturing. Uh, ben was willing to be our uh, kickoff speaker today and again, we can't have anybody better. Um, and I, I want to welcome you to please use the chat to share some of your own manufacturing, uh, smart manufacturing journey stories and questions that you might have so that we can um, learn together um, on issues in smart manufacturing and what is working and what is not working and what things uh, people need to see, um, you know, from INEMI and within when the within growing the the industry um, to, to help you along your journeys. Um, see can't get the slides to move forward um our next session uh, we do have scheduled is for wednesday june 8th and we have um ivan aduna from co young uh, technology that's going to speak i will put in the chat window the registration link for you so that you can register for the call if you're if you're interested in it um we do know that we will have some additional sessions. The idea is to, to do the sessions up about once every three to four weeks. So uh, right now I've listed them as monthly. They might move a tiny bit, but um, there should be uh, there is a, a session plan for July and August already. We're still we're just negotiating to, to find a time that works. Um, and some of the speakers that we're talking to um, are uh, Cyborg and UCLA and Siemens on various topics in uh, artificial intelligence and digital twinning and also uh, just sort of some general work um, that is going on in, in smart manufacturing. Um, and we have others that we're, we're also talking with, so we may um, slot in some other speakers. And, and the goal is for this to be a, a tech topic series that uh, runs um, we have definitely plans for at least six sessions and then hopefully um, even beyond that. But um, you're not here to, to hear from me. You're here to hear from Ben. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and Ben is going to take over and give you his presentation. So again, thank you very much for your time and um, I will talk to you back um, at the end of the session. So Ben, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Mark, uh, and thank you again for, for having the, the World Economic Forum uh, today. Uh, so just to introduce to everybody, um, my name is uh, Ben. I'm an expert and project fellow with the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, predominantly around the, the, as the project lead for the Global Smart Industry Readiness Index Initiative, which I'll be uh, sharing with everyone uh, today. So um, for the purpose of today's session, I will just uh, do a few things. Setting number one, I'll just give everybody here on the call a very brief, brief background on what the Smart Industry Readiness Index uh, is and what the frame, the initiative is all about. Uh, number two, I will just cover some of the key components around the program and some of the interesting learnings and uh, statistics uh, uh, that actually this whole program has uh, shed light on. And the third thing is, of course, to give some more practical case studies in terms of how different manufacturing companies and other stakeholders in this space uh, have really leveraged the program to help accelerate their smart manufacturing transformation uh, journey. So uh, just keep jumping right in, um, the Smart Industry Readiness Index in and of itself is a suite of frameworks and tools um, that has been created um, originally by the Singapore government, but now has been passed on to uh, the World Economic Forum and some broader international organization 
really to help manufacturers uh, kickstart uh, their transformation journey by educating them on the latest uh, technologies or the latest concepts around smart manufacturing, uh, providing them with a framework to, to evaluate their manufacturing plants. Uh, as well as give them guidance in terms of the benchmarks and learning points from others. Uh, as you can see, this is the core framework around um, the Smart Industry Readiness Index or CIRI uh, for short. As you can see, it covers the three main uh, building blocks uh, for any holistic transformation. Uh, how well your process are designed, uh, whether you are you know, deploying um, future ready technologies, and also, of course, the last one is organization to make sure that the, the structures within the organization and the workforce you have uh, is able to facilitate transformation uh, rather than deter it. So this would be the, the framework that govern the entire uh, uh, program. So coming to the initiative is actually a partnership uh, with the World Economic Forum along with a whole uh, um, band of uh, international partners. Uh, we seek to do three things this project. Number one, I think we wanted to position CV as the internationally recognized uh, standard for Industry 4.0 benchmarking to help people uh, understand where they are and how the, the world is today. And number two, the, through this, by accelerating adoption of CV as the internationally recognized standard, we are actively building the world's largest uh, database and benchmarks on the current state of manufacturing, so really uh, providing information on the digital maturity uh, of where companies are today. The functional aim of this whole exercise is really to reform the way uh, the community approach industrial transformation, where rather than listening to just case studies or ad hoc uh, discoveries, we try to have some have some form of guidance using standardized methodologies supported by data. So in a nutshell, really, um, I'll come to this in a bit, but CV in and of itself provide, uh, is think of CV as a digital maturity assessment program to evaluate your own manufacturing site and also compare yourself to um, other companies as well. So what makes um, CV um, so unique that the, the World Economic Forum and all the international partners chooses to stand behind? I think all of us on this um, session knows that there are actually many, many uh, frameworks or assessment tools out there. Um, but but CIRI uh, in and of itself stands out for five main reasons. Uh, number one, it is uh, of course comprehensive. Um, within the assessment, it covers all the key building blocks. Um, some of the, the previous ones only have one component, like a deep dive on technology. Another one, maybe a deep dive on process design. So this one covers all the key areas. And number two, the entire program in and of itself is inclusive and relevant. So it, irregardless of your current level of maturity, uh, what industry you are, the size of your company, uh, it will be something relevant for you. So it's very inclusive. The third thing is that the entire program, or, or especially the digital maturity evaluation, is highly usable. So you don't need too much time to complete and it does not compromise on technical rigor. Before this whole CV program came out, uh, there was two main camps in terms of uh, maturity assessment programs. So the first kind is called the Mickey Mouse uh, assessments. Uh, this is what we describe as those online self uh, surveys, 20 questions. You, you can click and select a few um, options and then it'll tell you where you are. It's extremely um, easy to, to use, but in, in terms of technical rigor, not so much. Then the other spectrum will be those that's highly rigorous. They take a few months, tens of thousands of dollars, very robust, but it takes a lot of time and resource to actually administer. And not everybody has that kind of um, a financial and manpower a commitment to in to invest in for this kind of assessment. So this entire assessment program through CIRI uh, aims to sit in the Goldilocks zone where it balances um, usability with technical rigor. The fourth one is the fact that the entire program is fully independent and neutral. It is now run and governed by non governmental non-for-profit organizations and all the auditors that go down to make the evaluation are also done by third-party certified individuals. So the whole program does not rely on self-administered declarations where it's very difficult to attest to the objectivity uh, of the, the results. The fifth one is a lot of the program, the entire program is data-backed. So a lot of the advice, a lot of the, the insights, the information that's being shared is all taken from a uh, large data size to give guidance on what the current state is. So there are many programs out there that might have one, two or three of all these um, value props. 
um, but only Siri has Embody R5, which is why the forum is choosing to stand behind this program and promote this as the single framework that they will um, advocate for to its international partners around the world. So I think I spoke a lot uh, around this uh, digital maturity uh, program under this uh, Siri initiative. So this is what you see here is what we call the official Siri assessment. Uh, functionally, it's a two-day um, independent assessment of factual or plan to evaluate its current state and provide benchmark against its industry peers. As you can see, it only takes two days across three uh, straightforward phases, uh, a simple onboarding to brief what is required, uh, actual evaluation by the, the assessor or auditor, and then you get a debrief session um, with a report of the results and how to interpret the findings. So this would be one, this is one of the core pillars around the official Siri, uh, around the Siri program, uh, which is what we are hoping to get more manufacturers to uh, come on board and, and take up. So this uh, official Siri assessment, or you can think of it once again as a digital maturity assessment, at the completion of this exercise, uh, you will actually get an official report that provides a, a manufacturing company with three things. The current state of a facility across the 16 dimensions uh, from the framework I showed earlier. Uh, after the presentation, we can track back and I can run everybody through the 16 dimensions again uh, if we want to. So we'll give you a current state of your facility across the 16 areas. Uh, you provide some benchmarks of how you stack up uh, against your industry peers. And number three, you also provide um, some guidance in where you want to prioritize your transformation exercise around. So one thing I, I haven't mentioned is within this a digital maturity assessment, there's two main components. One will be the assessment component where they evaluate the current state of your site. And then there's also a prioritization component where taking into account certain uh, inputs from the, the company, they will then recommend key areas to look at, which is uh, what um, section C will provide for every official report. So this program is ongoing for a few years um, and it, the, the adoption rate has been very strong uh, as of today, uh, more than 850 companies and organizations across uh, 35 different countries have already come on board, have taken the official Siri assessment to accelerate their smart transformation uh, uh, journey. So many of these companies have completed it, they've gotten the report and then they've worked either with their in-house team or with some um, partners to implement their transformation exercises. So the next two sections I want to cover with everyone is um, what can this uh, CV information actually provide for a manufacturing company or the, the general community? So every two, three years, um, we actually publish what we call the Manufacturing Transformation Insights Report. Uh, in there, we actually offer new uh, learning points and new data findings uh, relating to uh, the current state of manufacturing today. So recently, uh, in earlier in February, a couple months ago, we published the 2022 edition. Uh, and it draws from more than 600 companies across 30 countries to give everybody a quick sense in terms of where the current state is, as well as some case studies of how different organizations are leveraging the CV program to accelerate their transformation journey. So uh, in this part, I will show some interesting insights that might uh, be interesting to uh, the audience here. So one of the, the main findings is that we were able to, to illustrate what the top, the most mature uh, manufacturing sectors uh, for 2022. And so as you can see here on the, the, the table, on the top, the higher portion of the slide, you can see that semiconductors, electronic, pharmaceuticals uh, um, are the top three um, sectors uh, today, isn't, which is not too far or too dis, not too dissimilar from the 2019 uh, report as well. Uh, one of the main change in the top five is that we have seen logistics uh, catching up, uh, replacing medical tech as the fifth most mature sector. Uh, we observed this for a few reasons. Uh, number one, um, there's a huge, uh, because of COVID-19, a lot of the consumer demand has actually moved towards um, online purchases, as well as just the general trend where people are start uh, going to online shopping, e-commerce uh, much more aggressively. So over there, because the increasing demand and, and the need to uh, meet all the, the changing uh, consumer patterns, we see the logistics company putting a lot more emphasis in digitalization, um, line flexibility, uh, supply chain integration to actually accommodate some of these uh, growing uh, business pressures, so which is why uh, they actually moved up significantly in their maturity uh, from 2019 to 2022. The next uh, diagram here is actually gives uh, illustration in terms of where all the different manufacturing sectors sit in terms of their maturity across two measures. Um, the y-axis is the maturity of a particular sector and then the 
Uh, x-axis is the variance which describes how uh, dispersed the maturity generally is across uh, within a particular sector, excuse me. So how to interpret this is that if, say for example, for a com organization like a, a sector like electronics, you can see that they have very high maturity, means in general, the entire sector is very uh, digitally advanced. However, there's also very high variance, which means that there's certain subsectors within the electronics group um, actually um, are lagging behind, which is like stretching the dispersion within the sector itself. Then for another sector, let's say machinery and equipment or food and beverage, we can see that the maturity is uh, low, but the variance is also low. So that means the general sector is clustered quite closely together. So to a technology company um, or what have you, or maybe a government organization, understanding the profile allows you to be more deliberate in your interventions. So in, a, in the instance of food and beverage, given that they're all around the same level, then let's say a, a business association or let's say government will then come would then come up with let's say more modular um, turnkey solutions that might be applicable on them on to a mass group of organizations to maybe help the FMB sector. So this is how some of this information provides some kind of interpretation of where your sector is. The other one that I think uh, is actually one of the most interesting uh, table from, from uh, the feedback that we have is what we call the 3B maturity benchmark. So what this uh, table actually provides is we give companies and organizations a, a glimpse in terms of what is the digital maturity profile of different demographics of companies. So the green profile dotted lines represent the maturity profile of top 10% uh, the top 10 percentile of all manufacturing companies. The red one represents the bottom 10, and then the purple re represents the middle 80. So what this uh, informs companies is that if I want to understand how does a top 10 percent or a, a very advanced best-in-class manufacturing company will look like, this would be the maturity profile of a top 10 percent. So this number one allows you to see how you stack up among the different demographics, and two helps you to set more realistic aspirations in your in your smart manufacturing journey. If you're a small medium enterprise um, that doesn't have the kind of budget like a, the major conglomerate, then aspiring to top 10 might not be what you should look at. Maybe you want just to say, I want to beat the, the industry average or pass the middle 80th percentile. So then that allows you to calibrate your interventions as well. I think one interesting um, uh, discovery that we have noted is that if you look at the top 10% compared to the others, you can see that for all the, the, co the connectivity dimensions, which is like number five, number eight, as well as number 11, the distance between the average to the top is much more pronounced than the other dimensions. So this gives us a sense that really the top companies are focusing significantly on connectivity, whether it's on the shop floor, on the enterprise level, or the facility level, um, to enable greater integration um, and greater connectivity. So if any of the, the people on the call, or if you, you know you have a conglomerate with uh, aspirations to be the best, connectivity will be something that you might want to double your focus down on. So other uh, benchmarks that we should also provide is a comparison between the uh, MNCs and SMEs. So as you can see here, one the interesting thing is that they follow a similar maturity profile, just maybe around half or one band maturity behind. Um, so this was, uh, quite interesting because we we learned that the average manufacturing top com uh, average SME and an average MNC the maturity is not too big, so this gives us a, a good sense to say that hey actually there's much more that everyone can actually do in their digitalization journey towards smart manufacturing, whether or not you're big or, or you're small that there's plenty of opportunities and room for improvement. The next one here is um, one of the key insight uh, relating to what are uh, what's considered important to the different profiles of manufacturers. This is something that um, in the assessments, um, this is something that uh, data has been collected. So in time, we could also share what are you know manufacturing companies of, of different profiles thinking about or prioritizing their their attention on. Um, generally, we we observe that productivity and um, Product quality it still remains uh, top of mind, regardless of the demographics. But for companies that are a bit more ahead in their digital transformation journey, we start to see them focusing more on tension in terms of um, speed, uh, time to market, time to delivery, speed, as well as um, flexibility as well to kind of adapt to the changing um, 
consumer patterns and the volatility in the market because of COVID and you know um, some geopolitical instability that we're observing uh, in recent times. So there's a few more uh, insights. I, I won't uh, spend too much time um, on, on this. Um, the next section that I thought would be useful to cover for everybody here is really some of the applications uh, of how Siri uh, has been used. So one of the ways that I think Siri has been very helpful is supporting manufacturers in strengthening their transformation journey um, towards a, a more digi digitalized or, or a smart factory um, ambitions that they might have. So Pepper and Folk here, you see here, is actually a German Mitterstand, which is a, a, a larger version of a SME from Germany. And so they have a few sites which are quite dated from a while ago, which they have since set up. So what they actually did was they actually administered the official Siri assessment back in 2018 on one of their uh, older sites. Then once they got the profile of their transformation, then they went ahead to actually execute a series of digitalization uh, exercises specific to areas that they want to uh, advance. And then from there in 2021, then they did a reassessment again to see if they have kind of improved their maturity. So on the table here on the right side, you can see that for areas that they focus their attention on, um, they actually improve their maturity um, by one to two uh, maturity levels um, in areas that they, they want to work on. And they're actually their original aspiration would actually to be to catch up to the average company. And that was what they managed to achieve um, across their two, three years uh, through leveraging Siri. So Siri really gave them a lot more um, information and guidance in terms of like how they want to um, make the, the transformation direction. So that was on a uh, specific site level. The the next uh, another case study some organizations wanted to do on the organization wide. So in this particular instance, you see here a hire, which is also an electronics company. Um, they wanted to take stock of their digitalization program. Uh, and also, and of course, double check if what they have been doing is directionally correct and also see if they found any blind spots. So what they did was they administered the assessment on four of their top sites uh, within China to see if their, these sites are indeed more advanced than their peers and to see if there are any missed opportunities. And they did manage to find some, some weak points um, because no roadmap is perfect, as you can see here. And they also did validate that their sites are actually better than the top 10%. So it did give them the affirmation that their transformation uh, roadmap is moving in the right direction. So from there, they did two things. Two, they addressed some of the blind spots that they found in site-specific um, weak points. And then after that, they distilled all these learnings to re-enhance their digitization uh, project bef before, I think this year's rolling out this on a more um, institutional level to their 100 over manufacturing sites worldwide. So this is an example how uh, um, uh, Google conglomerate on the, from the electronic sector as well, um, leverage the assessment to accelerate their digitalization efforts. So yeah, so the whole process in terms of how uh, the application goes is not too complicated. Uh, generally, we see manufacturers nominating a few sites to take the assessment first. And then once they got, got the report, they kind of aggregated the findings from all the reports address the, the weak points and then scaling um, embarking on phase two of scaling up to either um, doing more sites to have a more comprehensive comparison or then establishing a more corporate team to, to address uh, site specific issues or inc uh, expand the existing global roadmap that they have. The last slide I just wanted to share with uh, everyone here uh, today is beyond company level transformation, Siri has also been very helpful in helping governments and industry associations uh, do sectoral level transformation. So in the instance here, we have a Turkish um, automotive sector, uh, a trade association that actually wanted to do more, more sectoral level transformation. So what they actually did was they actually built in-house uh, auditors or assessors, and then mm. went out to evaluate uh, the maturity of all their members. So through this exercise, they got a, a quick sense or profile um, of the maturity of their members from the automotive association. And then from there, they could come up with specific interventions to actually help their uh, members of the trade association digitalize a bit better. They also use the findings to advise the governments on some of the new programs that can be uh, developed to um, have more ammunition, ammunition to support them as well. So I think I hope this uh, short sharing gives everyone a quick explanation in terms of the the Siri initiative, 
uh, some of the findings and learnings that you can get out of this, as well as a few case studies of how different organizations uh, have uh, leveraged Siri as well to uh, accelerate their transformation. So I think with that, uh, thanks to you, thank you so much for, for having me here again, and I'll be happy to uh, take any questions that um, anyone might have. Thanks, Ben. Um, there are some questions that came in through uh, the Please. chat. Um, well, so let I me may, yeah, go ahead. try to address them. OK. OK, let me so, take, a, take a read. Yeah, so Am Amber asked yep. about uh, how do they get the uh, Siri OS OS OSA document? I think you were you talked about that a little bit on slide 17, but maybe mm -hmm. some more details there. Yeah, OK, so I'll address all the questions one by one. So the first question sure. came out is like, how do you get the Siri uh, OSA uh, document? I would imagine you are referring to the official Siri assessment report. Um, so for that particular one, to get the report, you would need to undergo, your manufacturing site would need to undergo the official Siri uh, assessment. At the completion of the assessment, then you'll be, will be given uh, the official report um, from the regulating institution of Siri, which is now called the um, International Center for Industrial Transformation. So it's a new non-for-profit organization that we set up. There's forum backed that governs the entire program. So the report will be generated and the assessor will um, will send it to you. Uh, a point to, to, to add on is uh, it does not matter which assessor you reach out to for the assessment. The report uh, or the OSA report looks exactly the same because it's all generated from a single um, platform um, that will then which will then be provided uh, to you. So I hope that answers your question. The second question came from Francis. Um, so the question asks, uh, how does Siri compare with um, any of the main alternatives, particularly in the t in terms of the definition and approach? Um, so as of today, I think Siri in of itself don't really have an uh, exact um, alternative um, for, for, a few, for a few reasons. I think um, number one, um, a lot of the existing programs out there a predominant, a, pre, a large number of the assessment out there are, are self-administered surveys, um, which runs different from Siri because you require a third-party individual to come down and do the assessment. And this is uh, uh, one of the core difference because a lot of the data are now starting to being used by governments, international organization to advise policy work, um, which is why um, the uh, it's very important that the, the data remains neutral um, and objective. Um, for some of the closer um, alternatives, the, the general approach will be similar. Uh, we see more and more uh, frameworks out there using the uh, the Siri 3 um, building blocks to kind of guide the way they structure their, their framework. So this would be it. In terms of where the, the Siri framework came about, it was taken off the a Rami 4.0 reference architecture that was uh, conceptualized um, by a panel of uh, thought leaders under the German Industry 4.0 initiative back in 2017. So I hope uh, that uh, answers the question. The second, the, the, the second follow-up from Francis as well is what is the time evolution uh, of the benchmark looks like? So in other words, how quickly are given industries becoming uh, smarter? Um, as of today, I think the, we have not uh, went down to look at a time series uh, because right now many of the organizations are still taking uh, the first um, official series assessment for the organization. But as of this year, we are starting to see a lot of um, manufacturing plants start in the first batch, starting to do the second one, much like Pepper and Folk, which I shared. So it's much likely that we'll see a clearer representation on the time evolution of the benchmarks, uh, probably in 2014 or 2024 or 2025. But from the small sample size we've seen for this iteration, we generally see that for companies that took the first assessment seriously and these are transformation work, um, the average improvement is around one maturity band of improvement um, across those that did uh, the work. Okay. Uh, Alan asked, <laughs> Great slides, uh, when would they be available? Um, I believe uh, Mark will circulate um, them to you um, after yep. the end of this uh, session. I think you will also leave my contact and some details. So if you have anything you want to follow up or any further queries, 
you guys want to ask, uh, you can reach out to me and we can have a, uh, a private session uh, just for us to brief your, your organization through a little bit more. Sure, I'll make sure I send out your, your contact uh, information. That's, that's okay. Um, let's see. So I, I also, the two links that you have on your website, on your PowerPoint, I put into the chat so folks can get to those easily. Um, and it looks like Dan uh, just uh, asked another question. Um, would you like me right. to unmute you, Dan? And then you can ask your question. Let's see here. I can find him. Can I? Uh, or let's see. I can I can read out Dan's question. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to try to unmute him. Yeah. Hi, Dan. We meet again. I think we spoke previously before. So Dan asked, um, what are the key points of differenti differentiation um, in the top five maturity be between electronics and semiconductors? And where do the outsourced semiconductor test assembly companies reside? So I don't have the in the off the top of my mind the key differentiating points. Um, this one uh, we have to go back and check, but I think you can take a look at the. So one thing that was not covered on this slide actually, just to f from Dan's question is beyond some of this 3B maturity benchmark which you saw on the top 10, bottom 10, and middle 80, we actually published the what we call industry performance cards. So these are actually industry averages of 14 different industry sector groups um, around the manufacturing domain. And so in the publicly available white paper, which can be accessed from some of the links that Mark posted, at the back of the white paper, you can actually find the those industry performance cards to actually see a comparison between the, the average maturity for semiconductors and electronics. Unfortunately, I don't believe the 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 actual um, comparison between the top semicon companies and top electronic companies is currently publicly uh, available. However, to the second point of your question, I do know that the test assembly companies tend to are uh, actually uh, much lower in maturity as compared to the front end fabs. This is something that um, I have seen in the in the data set and it's also why the uh, variance within the semiconductor um, sector is actually quite big because uh, between the front end and the back end actually the, the maturity uh, disparity is quite significant. I hope that answers it. Um, Prasad um, asked another question, which is how does Siri compares with IPC CFX? Uh, unfortunately, I would need a bit of clarification. What does uh, CFX stands for? Uh, let's see. I don't know that I have the best definition for that. Let me see if I if someone will answer. That's great, but I will try to find a, a good uh, resource for. Connected factory exchange. So it's a, I believe it's a communications protocol that IPC has. Yeah, I would say that if I recall, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert in the entire universe of manufacturing, but I remember the connected factory exchange is an open industry standard, if I recall uh, correctly, for IoT. Uh, connections. So um, Siri, now, I think think of Siri as more of a management level um, program that gives you a macro sense in terms of where the, the general digital maturity of your production site is. Then I would think something like all the different uh, open industry standards uh, drill down to very specific component in checking for, let's say, um, short floor connectivity, or what have you. So Siri for itself actually dis details or describes the particular maturity stat state that we want to achieve towards. And I think some of all these uh, open industry standards um, by adopting that allow you to get to this uh, different um, states of uh, connectivity, of state of automation, of state of maturity. So I would imagine it is a, a subset of it, I suppose. Um, two complementary frameworks to help uh, organization get to the, the same outcome in the long run. Okay. I do my um, best. No, 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 <laughs> that's good. I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the short story is 
the IPCC effects is it, it's it's a connectivity protocol for for the various equipment so they can all talk to each other at a super high level, whereas the Siri is is not a communication protocol. <laughs> or no, it, yeah, it's correct. Not, yeah, yeah. So correct. there is a difference between the two. But so the, a kind of a, another question that is that came in on the on the side to me was. Um, can you talk a little bit more about or emphasize uh, within the, especially within the electronics manufacturers, how how do they, or, or, or how does leveraging the the framework that Siri talks about or presents to them, what does, what can they, ex if they do what you say, what can they expect to achieve? It will result kind of, what, it will result in X if you follow the Siri, the, these things that Siri is laying out. A little more. Right. Correct. So um, to, to put it in, in a very simple way of thinking, I think I think many of the electronics companies today do have a, some form of like a roadmap or active thinking around smart manufacturing and digital transformation. So what Siri is here to help solve is to provide each of these companies with two things. I think number one, um, it aims to provide these companies with a bit more confidence in knowing that what they're doing is directionally correct. And they do it through the, the, the assessment because it provides a neutral um, report, if you will, of your current state, your current maturity state um, across based on the, the, based on the CV framework. So at least you, you can use it as a metric to kind of cross check, okay, I have covered all the grounds that I, I've, I, I should be looking at, and I have clarity in terms of where my strengths are and where my weak points are. So that's the first thing. So all this additional information that CV provides gives the team a bit more confidence that what that they are working around something that they have uh, more visibility on. The second thing that CV provides is urgency. A lot of times there are organizations that know where they are. They, they know their strengths, they know their weakness. But sometimes knowing where other people stand in relation to where you are give you a bit more urgency that you might have to do something. So, which is why the, the benchmark is the second key component. We show where you stand as an illustration of where you you where, where you where you are in relation to everybody else. So then if let's say the statistics suggest that you are below average for let's say majority of the dimensions, it gives a company a little bit more urgency and impetus to say, okay, I probably need to start doing something more proactively because I do not desire to remain in the uh, bottom 50th percentile. So functionally, the CV program and report gives the company more confidence because they know where they are and two, more urgency because they have a rough sense in terms of where they stack up among their peers. And so the whole intention is to really uh, energize and mobilize companies to take a more active step or those that are taking active steps, a bigger active step to bring themselves towards a more digital state. The general uh, opinion is that in the next 20, 30 years, digitalized, a digitalized uh, factory is the, the, the new normal. Where we want for, for organizations who are, uh, who are more progressive minded is to help you get there sooner rather than later. I think so, so the, the question is not so much that will I get there, the question is more like when you will get there. To make sure that you in the process of you getting there you don't get disrupted out or you lose certain opportunities just because you didn't do it a bit earlier no that's that's great um i think dan may be typing and have something i have a sort of sort of sort of a follow-on question to that is if 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 i'm a and i'm I'm with INME, so I'm not I'm not a manufacturing company. But if if I'm a, a you know a manufacturer uh, or an organization, and I've gone through this the Siri in 2022, and I've gotten the report, and I'm trying to to better myself, when when should I have Siri come in and maybe assess again? Is it I, I imagine you know it's not a static thing that I'm working on, and and I want to judge that I am improving uh, over time. I hope so. How how should I how should I plan for maybe doing this multiple times? Should I plan on doing it multiple times? How would right. that uh, th That's a great question. So the, the general counsel advice we give is that you only do a reassessment 
when you have done something and you have reached a, a, a good stopping point. So if you have, you take the assessment, let's say this year, and you didn't do anything in the next three years, there's no point doing a reassessment because your manufacturing size is the same state as you were three years ago. So the counsel is we give is that, let's say you have, you've done the assessment this year, you've done some good work in two years to digitize a few areas you want to. When you've done, let's say the first stage of your transformation journey, you can do a reassessment to see that at the pace of your progression and how fast maybe other people are progressing as well. So you only do it after you've completed like one set of transformation initiatives um, and then you, you you take it again, much like what uh, Pepper, the Pepper and Folk case uh, did. So in 2018, first one, bunch of initiatives over a two and a half year period and then reassessment again in 2021 to see where they are. And then with the new uh, maturity state, then they roadmap uh, the next round of improvements uh, and then and so forth and so on. So Dan, uh, thank you. Uh, Dan yeah, actually so, asked a question that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so Dan asked, uh, has anyone mentioned the investment level required to move from level three to level four, I suppose, not level four to level three? Um, so um, as of now, actually, there is no definitive um, value uh, for a couple of reasons. I think for certain, for different sectors require different type of technologies to advance themselves. And number two, for bigger conglomerates, some of them have also have in-house teams um, or um, specific partners that might also um, give them some uh, benefits in terms of uh, reducing certain uh, cost outlay from outsourcing and whatnot. So unfortunately, we, there is no uh, definitive uh, in, uh, investment level that we could actually say, oh, this is the average amount to move from uh, band three to band four. What we generally try to do is that we try to connect um, the community with people that have done it. So in the case of hire, uh, they did move some of their bands from level three to level four. Uh, I'll bet some of them were in-house improvement works. So then uh, what we do is we uh, we do invite people at Hire to come speak, to sell, share on their investment uh, or their transformation journey and some of the costs that they incurred. Um, I haven't seen any of them be very descriptive in, in outlaying the investment costs because maybe it's, uh, you know, it's dispersed in different places, but this is something that can be done if let's say the, the INEMI community wants to talk to some people that have done some transformation work and then you can ask them directly how much they spent. Okay, I think his he he actually was referring to the the top five digitally mature sectors. Like, what what's the cost? Uh, so your your slide on the top five most digitally mature sectors. If you show that, um, where you have the changes from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty two. If what would the say? What would the uh, energy and chemical sector cost if to to move up to? where the pharmaceutical sector is in terms of those rankings. I think it's like, what kind of investments would they need to be making to uh, up that? Yeah, chart? unfortunately yeah. this, I have, I have no, <laughs> I've, I've no, no idea of no sense uh, yeah. because this is, they evaluate the maturity of an entire sector. So um, I don't think anyone has the data to say like, what is the aggregated cost that the entire sector actually invested in that, that three year period to actually like um, improve themselves to be marginally better. Yeah. OK, no, I apologize. So the next one, um, Francis asked, Siri focus on what happens within an enterprise. Um, any plans to extend to evaluating the ecosystem um, or supply chain? So relating to the supply chain, there are components or elements uh, within Siri that covers that. Um, when the slides are circulated, one of the dimension looks at your horizontal integration. So how well integrated you are between uh, your suppliers as well as your customers. There's also a component in organization that looks at the uh, in inter intra um, engagements or collaborations, also really describing the level of uh, integration within uh, your the uh, manufacturer's uh, value chain. So these are some of the, the elements that has been incorporated uh, into it as well. So think of series focus as everything around a manufacturing plant um, as the shop floor would be the shop floor itself, the facility, and then enterprise, which stretches a bit into the customer and um, suppliers. On the ecosystem level, um, that would be generally done through the aggregation of all the companies that have done the assessment. So when you aggregate all the data, it gives a snapshot in terms of how the ecosystem uh, 
is actually performing depending on who you want to uh, survey and sample. Okay. Um, so we have a, a, about 10 minutes left if, if there are other questions. So it uh, looks like Fran Francis is typing. I think Dan is. Yeah, so 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 then just a quick comment to your, to 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 the the final message you wrote. Uh, unfortunately, there is no sense of the aggregation of all costs to move uh, from one band to another, particularly on a sectorial level. Uh, on a company level, we I mean you, we can definitely like organize sessions to ask the company, but I doubt they would share as well. Exactly, and I think that's at the end of the day, people are always going to wonder. Okay, what what is the investment? for us to, to move up a band. And I think that you had one slide that shows when you differentiate that you, you pointed out and said, look at connectivity. Connectivity is the greatest gap across a couple different um, spaces. And so I think people are always going to bend to look at connectivity and say, okay, what is the cost to connect pieces of equipment? What's the cost of taking that into the MES system? What's the cost of actually putting into a um, enterprise level system. And I think some individuals are actually looking at those metrics and the uh, investment levels to determine you know, how to actually uh, propose going forward to become more digitally. I exactly this slide. So, yeah. so in other words, you know, the connectivity, you, know, you pointed out that, that that gap is the greatest. And so people are always going to say, we'd like to shore up that gap. So what is the cost associated with the gap? And then also the other one is, how can I leverage my supply chain? In other words, you know, it, having myself connected is great, but it's really the entire ecosystem, which I think you brought you know, earlier when, when you talk about the semiconductor world. The semiconductor world has been very uh, specific about connecting the ecosystem so they they aren't looking at just one location it's really what what is required to bring everybody together to have access to that data and then also what what are the security conditions necessary to make sure that data is available but then also to ensure that data is not necessarily um provided to outsiders or even within company to company, you, you want to make sure that that's been data has been uh, uh, anonymized. And so th those are, I think, some of the issues that uh, individuals are starting to really discuss. And I would love to to hear what some of your stakeholders uh, that participate in this think about, you know, um, whether you have edge foundries of data or cloud foundries of data, and then what are the security conditions or security discussions? Yeah, I think this is uh, this is something that everybody is also asking me. Um, and I, I think candidly speaking, I, I don't think in any sector has arrived at the state by which you are describing, uh, I think right now, because uh, in terms of the a collective movement, uh, of a uh, entire sector upwards in unity and openly, we have not actually observed that yet. But there's something definitely that the new organization that we've set up inside is looking to do, is really to really uh, dial up more some of all these uh, discussions and um, uh, information to make uh, available. Uh, but this would take, I think, some time to actually um, get us there because first of all, the whole co community needs to move up first and then you need to create a case study of the entire uh, movement. So uh, right, at least right. the, the positive point is we have seen a lot of um, action. Um, so now it's just to maybe keep track of all these actions and then ask like, okay, what is the outcome and deliverable? We have been able to do it on a company level for a few people. Um, I think Hai was one of the best case study because they're super open. They told us, we they, they, made, they provided, um, they allow us to publicly share their, their averages, their benchmark, and then um, showed, showed us like what the interventions that they did. So we really just need more organizations to come on board and then not just on a company level, but sectoral level, and then, you know, bridge, um, bridge all this or, or uh, translate all this into a case study that can, we can do for public sharing. The last statement is exactly, <laughs> it's, it's the sharing. 
and I and I think that um, so so Mark and and Francis who were both online uh, for INAMI. I think that you know as you know the we're in the midst of updating our roadmap and we did uh, in the first edition mention Siri and and uh, the activities that uh, initiatives that you have ongoing and I think that that insight you just said um, has become very uh, high on the uh, visibility chart of you know how do we uh, how do we ensure that individuals are comfortable in sharing data and how do we make sure that everybody is invested in the future and I don't mean invested meaning financially but how do we make sure that everybody's invested in the benefits that are able to be realized when people share data within this secure environment and I, and I think that's something that maybe from your position you can really foster and and uh, provide that level of support exactly so we leave it into mark's good hands to make things happen on a sectorial we're level we're trying <laughs> Dan, Dan, and others on this call have been part of part of the INEMI trip here for three, four years now. As we're as we're working into how how the smart manufacturing industry can work better, and what what is it that we need to you know close the gaps for them. So having hearing from you, what being open and investing in this activity is is you know how valuable that is. That's that's great for for us to hear, and hopefully it's something that will promote more and more of our members to want to share. Really, is what is what it is what it comes down to. I think. Uh, yeah, and I think I think it has been proven to be possible because the 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 automotive association in Turkey was able to mobilize it. Uh, I think the 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 trade association gave a small sponsorship for all their members that is open to take the official CU assessment. And then through the entire exercise, and then they work through the in the, the new uh, inside organization that manages Siri as well to aggregate the data and, and get visibility on the entire sector. So this is something uh, a, a roadmap that um, INEMI or whoever can also replicate um, in the same process to gain visibility of the current state of where all your members are. Um, and you only need to only by doing so can by knowing having visibility of where your front end guys are and where your back end test assembly people are. And what the disparities will be, and then then bringing together to a dialogue to talk around um, ways to work on improving. Then, but the first step, of course, will be to have uh, data visibility. So the case study is fully public uh, in the white paper. We detail as detail as we can exactly what they did, uh, step by step. And so there's something that maybe I we can consider in the coming months as well. Absolutely. Ah, uh, so. Let me thank you very much for your time and attention, uh, everybody. Um, I know it's it's uh, kind of late for you, Ben. So thank you for your for your time, and um, we will get a note out to everybody that registered, so that you can give have access to the presentation materials. And I I just uh, want to thank you again and remind folks that we will have our our second session on June. 8th, where we'll hear from uh, Ko Young and they're going to talk about some of the AI work that they're doing. So Dan or anybody, any last words? OK, sounds like Dan, Dan, you and Dan will talk about the, the item roadmap because Dan and uh, Ron John from PDF are, are leading the, the roadmap work for for identity and smart manufacturing. So thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate your time and attention and uh, Ben. Awesome job. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank thank you again. Thank you again for, for having us to have this opportunity to um, speak with you, speak, share this journey with you guys, and we hope to have a closer collaboration in the months to come. Thank you very much. No worries. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Bye, guys.